In the autumn of 1992, some roadways taking place in the middle of Dover changed our view of the Bronze Age forever. We'd been monitoring the excavation of a deep shaft at the end of Bench Street, and that shaft had been cut some considerable depth through the ancient sediments feeding the River Dower, uh, and a depth of about six metres below ground level, so we came across these ancient timbers. The timber lay below the remains of the medieval town wall, and even below the remains of the Roman harbour, so it had to be older than either of these. In the corner of the pit, the archaeologists could make out a carved wooden shape and what appeared to be a piece of twisted fibre rope. I think initially it did actually fill us with dread and panic um, and then realisation that we had actually found something really of quite exceptional importance. With the roadworks already running late, there was no time to carry out a lengthy archaeological dig. And worse still, time was running out for the boat. Once exposed to the air, the timbers would start to decay rapidly. Whatever happened next had to happen fast. The decision was taken to remove as much of the boat as possible from the pit. Although the roadworks had done some damage, six metres of timbers were still intact and beautiful. It was tempting to try and move them whole, but the risk was high. Forty-six years before, an attempt had been made to lift a similar Bronze Age boat in one piece from the mud of the River Humber. It did not survive intact. The Dover team decided to go for the safer, faster option of cutting the boat into easily moved sections that could be reassembled at a later date. With the exposed timbers being constantly sprayed to keep them wet, the painstaking process of measuring, recording, cleaning and moving had to take place in cramped, wet and muddy conditions. Amid intense interest from the media and the public, the excavation team worked day and night to record and remove the first section of the boat in just the first copper dam showed us the central, a central section of the boat and a composite rope sewn boat. We had a number of cleats exposed, but overall we could see we were in the middle of the structure. And what we really needed to do was to find at least one end. After much discussion with the Department of Transport and English Heritage, who were funding the work, the go ahead was given to sink a second pit next to the first. It was a gamble that paid off. The second excavation revealed another section of boat and, most importantly, one of the ends with its unusual Y shape. We sank the second coffer down and we were exceptionally fortunate in exposing not just another part of the boat, but the end of the boat. In fact, getting the boat out of the ground was only a beginning and the boat was still in danger. Ancient waterlogged wood is deceptive. Although it still looks like wood, most of its structure and strength have gone. Buried underground, the water and mud hold the timbers together, but if it dries out, it quickly begins to deteriorate. First aid then, for the salvaged timbers, was to get them back into the water as soon as possible with funding from English Heritage and using tanks built and donated by Dover Harbour Board. Although water was holding the timber together, the aim from now on was to extract every last drop and replace it with something else to give the wood strength. So, after a period of cleaning, measuring and recording, the sections were soaked in a liquid wax solution, polyethylene glycol, or PEG, which gradually fills the cells of the wood structure and strengthens it. Then, after 16 months soaking, the timbers were carefully packed into purpose-built cases and sent to the Mary Rose Trust in Portsmouth to be freeze-dried. Freeze-drying removes any remaining water in the wood, making it much more solid and resistant to decay.
okay. The benefit of freeze drying is that we could preserve the boat very quickly. Um, we were very reluctant to cut the boat up before it came out of the ground, but we really had to because it meant that we could put it into the freeze dryer, something they hadn't been able to do, for example, with the Mary Rose, and have it back into the gallery uh, within two years. Meanwhile, in a wood in Somerset, a different kind of challenge was taking shape. Throughout its excavation and conservation, the Dover boat had been intensively studied. But some aspects of the boat, such as how it was built, could still only be guessed at. Following the principle that you can learn by doing, a group of archaeologists set out to build a replica of part of the boat for themselves, using only the Bronze Age tools that the original boat builders would have had. Finding a suitable tree was the first problem. Trees tall enough and wide enough are extremely rare these days. Although they knew it was possible to fell a tree with Bronze Age axes, the team decided to buy themselves some time by using the modern method. For the boat building though, their tools were basic, wooden wedges and a wooden mallet to split the log in two. And bronze blades fitted to a handle to form either an axe or an axe. They used these to gradually hollow out the two halves of the log and to form the wide bottom planks. As on the original boat, these planks were held together with large wedges driven through these cleats carved out of the solid wood. Smaller pieces of timber strengthened the joints still further. Where the planks met, moss and wax covered with thin pieces of wood were used as waterproofing. And the two lower side planks were stitched onto the bottom planks with yew withes. By the end of the project, the team felt they understood much more about the original boat builders, their tools, and their methods. We learn about how effective the tools were compared with modern tools, or ineffective in some cases. We learned uh, a lot about the skills and energy of the original builders, how much work they put into it, and we learned about the assembly of different intricate parts of the original. Back in Dover, a team from Canterbury Archaeological Trust began the painstaking task of putting the boat back together again. This was something that had never been done before. You're taking 30 individual pieces of the boat and trying to join them back into one cohesive whole on a purpose-built cradle in such a way that didn't damage the boat and also so that it would look good at the end as well. And they've just done a fantastic job. Nine months after they began, the team were the first to marvel at the finished reassembled craft. And there it is today, a, a beautiful, integrated, composite, Bronze Age boat with all the wonderful features that were found during the excavation revealed for people to see for posterity. And we're absolutely thrilled. Both the original boat and the modern replica are now on display here in the museum. Radiocarbon dating, the most accurate method available, has dated the boat to about 1550 BC, even older than was first thought. And the preservation process has turned the Dover boat from dangerously soft waterlogged wood into a stable, solid structure. The Dover boat is a unique and important discovery. At over three and a half thousand years old, it's the oldest known seagoing vessel in the world, and was perhaps crossing the channel or trading along the coast just as the final stones were being added to Stonehenge. It proves that Bronze Age boat builders were highly skilled and experienced, and it shows 
that the people of Dover have always made use of the sea. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up, you can also subscribe to us, like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter, more videos coming soon.